In this video we will continue to talk about relativistic momentum but we will be looking at one of the fundamental laws of physics. So this is one of the laws of symmetry as proven by Emmy Noether and that is the law of the conservation of momentum. And that proof by Emmy Noether was very powerful in that it shows that momentum is always conserved. Uh, so it must be conserved at all speeds including relativistic speeds. So we'll have a look at what that means for how our objects behave at relativistic speeds. And we'll look at it by setting up an elastic collision. So once again, we have our spaceship and we have our space garage. Our spaceship is moving with a relative velocity V in the X direction. All of any, any quantities in red or in red dash are quantities from the point of view of the astronaut in his spaceship, so from the reference frame S dash, and any quantities in blue are quantities from the point of view of our space mechanic. So from the reference frame S. We'll set up our collision. So the astronaut throws a tennis ball, ball B, and the mechanic throws a tennis ball, which is ball A. The two balls are exactly the same, and both balls are thrown in the Y direction with exactly equal and opposite velocities as measured in their rest reference frames. So they're measured in the reference frames where the X velocities of the ball is zero. The initial velocity of ball A, according to the space mechanic, is UY0, and the initial velocity of ball B, according to the astronaut, is negative UY0. The balls collide and in a perfectly elastic collision and bounce back towards their original position. The mechanic's ball returns to him with a velocity of negative UY0, as measured by him, and the astronaut's with positive UY0, as measured by the astronaut. So to simplify things a little, we'll have a look at this collision uh, in the y direction only because our conservation of momentum must hold in each direction. So if momentum is conserved, momentum in the y direction must be conserved. So from the point of view of the space garage or of our mechanic, his ball, ball A, goes straight up and comes straight down again. So we know that he sees the velocity of his ball uh, in the x direction as 0 and in the y direction as uy0. So from his point of view, our rocket ship is traveling with a velocity v in the positive x direction. So he sees the path of ball b as shown in the diagram. So the velocity of ball b has both an x component and a y component. And according to him, the x component of ball b, the initial x, x velocity is equal to v, so that's the relative velocity of the spaceship. And the velocity of the y component, given by the Lorentz transform, with the initial velocities u dash, uh, as shown on the previous slide, is equal to negative u y zero divided by gamma. So these are the velocities of the two balls as viewed by the mechanic. We know that the conservation of momentum must hold. So the initial momentum of the system of our ball A and B must equal the final momentum. And writing that equation out in full, so writing each of the um, components of our initial and final momentum, we get this equation here. And we know that the two masses, the two tennis balls, measured in their reference frame, in their rest reference frame, excuse me, the rest mass of both, both balls is the same. But we don't know yet if anything happens to this, these masses moving at relativistic speeds. So therefore I've written the masses as ma and nb. And those are the two masses of the balls as measured from the reference frame of the space mechanic. So then when we substitute in our values for the velocities and we simplify the equation, we find actually that our masses are different. So our mass B as measured by the space mechanic is equal to gamma times the mass A. So what that says is our mass B moving at a velocity V relative to our mass A increases by a factor of gamma when measured from the reference frame of mass A. So as the relative speed of an object approaches the speed of light, gamma approaches infinity. So that means that its mass as measured from the reference frame that speed is relative to, uh, approaches infinity. So we'll have a, a look at that in a little bit more detail in the next video on energy.